slow, so he's going to go die anyway, so it's not a problem indeed. So there's the slowdown, and there's just the extra DPS right over here. The biggest problem right now for the blue team is that Champion Mage is so zoned out and cannot do anything else other than just, you know, poke away at whatever is over in front. But since she wasn't with the team, this is just going to cause so much more problematic um, problems because Shake Drizzle, low on mana, low on health, can't do anything. Prob low on mana, low on health, can do a little bit with attack damage, but can't do too much from it. So you have only Rayman, Slacko, and yourself against Crypt, who is pretty low, but Crashlander and Inverted Composer, who are pretty high in health and in mana. So Champion Mage not really doing anything else over here, not going to really help out the team, and with that True Shot Barrage, it is just an easy, easy, easy pick off for Crash Lander, no problem, and Crash Lander can use that offensive, offensive Arcane Shift to go ahead and take down or poke down a little bit more over here, reduce the crypts, just try to poke down as well, but again, a 2 for, or sorry, a 1 for 1 per se, really quickly, I thought it was a 2 for 1. But a 1 for 1 over there, stop a Baron attempt, and just do more, more goodness, whatever it is. Or do you see Slacko actually picking up the, the Blitzkrieg grab, or did you see the Shen coming in? I think Crash Lightning just went too aggressive, and going to take it down from it, no problem. That's death animation in slow motion, pretty funny. So yeah, Rayman and Slacko making the plays over there, what Champion Mage is kind of coming from behind. So, I think this is probably going to be the disengagement from both teams, but... Yeah, blue team just made it happen for them, purple team made it happen for them as well, and uh, you know what, it was an even, even kind of exchange, a 2 for 2, technically because Snake Oil, or 1 for 3 actually, because Snake Oil was pretty much the cause of why the Baron Call was happening, so really cool stuff to see from that. Blue team's turret has been destroyed. So the role of the jungler and the role of the, uh, we talked about the AB carry, we talked about the AD carry, top laner, you want to rush down as much as you can. And, okay, so the AD carry just pokes down as much as you can, right? The only thing is, you know, if you do have an AoE ult, or if you do have an AoE engagement, Sash, Ash, or Ezreal, you want to use that in a situation where you can get it down and initiate a spend fight. So, usually you don't want to start outside as a AD carry, but if you can find that opportunity to kind of poke off or pick off somebody, or you know, just do enough damage so that the team can kind of pounce upon and pick up a quick kill, you can start off and do um, really good stuff by um, poking down and giving that very, very, very great damage. In this instance in the, the game right now, you just want to have a middle poke down and just, you know, get as much of the people low as they can. All the problem is you do have Rayman being really, really tanky and can um, life steal up pretty much everything. You do have Probs who can actually life steal pretty well through his uh, um, rage, so that's really, really good to see. We do see a team fight happening again. Legend's trying to position himself for a good ult, but I don't think this is a smart idea, actually. Legend is taking a lot of bit of damage and has to back away now. I, I like where red team's kind of going and they're just pushing that as much as they can. But they want to do this while they're kind of low, not while they're pretty split up. Especially with TF being on the side. And we have also Caitlyn at bottom. So that's really, really a bad instance per se of what's happening right now. So hopefully the Nunu won't actually just start up engagement and just die really quickly. but. It's possible. It's very possible. But you see Probs and Rayman just pushing up over here. They go all just going to be back in the way and nothing happens. That. So in this little bit of engagement, uh, for the blue team, what you want to start off and actually damage down is uh, pretty much what's correct, grabbing onto one of the carries. If you can grab a carry, it's just really, really, really strong. But if you grab onto like something like maybe Nidalee or something, like that would be decent. Wouldn't be that bad of an engagement. But you want to just get down one of these people to make it a 45 really easily. And if you can engage from Shake Drizzle, that's just really strong with that double four three ball. All the damage coming in through the team, and you cannot do anything else. And with that grab coming in, that flash out has to be used. And you just see like a comp advantage really from the blue team, but we also see what the advantage is 
from the communication from Blue Team. So really good stuff to see from the team of Blue. But Purple Team is going to come right back on it and be able to pick off and go for the chase again. Press Lander should never, ever, ever um, blink forward that fast like that. Slash um, Arcane Shift that forward that fast. That is just not a good thing you want to do. Positioning, what we talked about, uh, I think, last time. You want to know <laughs> where you are in the map all the time. And as an AD carry, you do not want to be pressing so forward like that. And we do see the shutdown from a legend right over here with that ice ball. No problem, but yeah. If you're the AD carry or if you're the AP carry, if you don't have your stun out, if you don't have your flash up, you should not be in that front line. If you are in the front line, you are going to die like nine times out of ten. Definitely, indeed, no problem. So, definitely. Be, be wary of your positioning. What should you close on if you're losing a team fight? I think we saw it right there where um, they did pick off. Uh, who did they pick off? I think they picked off not Ezreal. They picked off Nidalee. And they picked off a lot of damage there. Red team just had to find an opportunity to just kind of turn the fight. Especially with Shen with Shadow Dash. You can turn a fight pretty easily, even if it's a 4v5 or so. And they did pick off. I th I think they only picked up one, but no, they picked up two because Crash Thunder died as well. But technically, they only picked up one, and they they just traded one for one right after that. But if you do have somebody that can pick off something from a lost situation, like a sh like a Shen, like a Blitzkrank or a Nunu, then yeah, all power to it. If you can pick off kills, you you even out the gold, you even out the score, and make sure that you know you can actually still be in this game. So I like to see that. Also, if you you have like a bit of advantage, like the top lane does, you want to just keep on doing it as much as you can, and the damage down onto it. Snake up being a little bit too aggressive right now is not going to be able to get grabbed down though. So great job in taking out the Olaf again, and all that aggression at top lane just secures this dragon really easily for the team of Red. So. Again, just going back into it, if you're that Nidalee player, if you're that solo top that can just keep on pushing, it's just really, really, really strong. We do see the team going to go group up, and we do see Shake Drizzle, Rayman, and Slacko kind of being in a bad position. Oh, the Inverter Converts are going to be missing out that shell dash, but the engagement is going to start from Crips. Crips going to be taking a lot of big damage from the start, no problem, indeed. Again, I usually don't like shot casting these things, but I mean, this is kind of just how it is for a team fight. Like, you want to just get as much little things in there and a little, and has a little bit of time as possible. As we do see Snake Oil already taking damage, and we do see Legend using that um, absolute zero this time as a uh, buffer to get away. So really good stuff right there from Legend to um, just in case that fight. Another thing is you want to know when you want to disengage and re-engage. If you can disengage from your from your fight in mean, that situation where Snake Oil was, he was like totally right here, could have died really easily. It's a really great, great idea just to disengage. And Nunu made it happen just because you don't want to be taking that extra damage from um, Nunu's ult because Nunu's ult is actually pretty strong. But you don't want to actually just you know get taken down in general. Oh, Slacko getting pulled off and Slacko is going to be able to get that kill. Oh no, Snake Oil is going to try to get away, and Verdict Converse is going to try to get back in, and he's going to get the perfect Shadow Dash onto all the characters. But the ult's going down from Yorick, and the see is coming down, but Crypt's going to go try to come in. going to get some minor, minor things happening, but nothing major actually happening for the team of Red, because they're just getting picked off really, really quickly. But Shake is going to be able to pick off from the behind of Snake Oil. Snake Oil is probably going to be picked off. Oh, that grab missing off mine. Snake Oil is going to be able to push away. And that was a really, really great 3v2 game. We will have to go back onto it, and I think we'll end this part of the episode right after that. Because I think nothing else really happens as a team like this. Let me do something about the sound really quick. Nico gets caught taking red from the team of Lou. Inverted Composer comes in, gets the save from Stan United. Nick Oil has a little bit more damage to give, so it can definitely do anything. And Inverted Composer gets the great, great Shadow Ash. So right here, 
if I'm the red team slash I'm crash lander and I'm legend slash I am I'm cryptic, I'm telling myself I should still back off. Even though I got the perfect shadow dash and I got the perfect everything, um, I don't have the team. And if I don't have the team with me, I should just back away. We do have Rayman pretty low. We do have Prab pretty low as well, but you know he does more damage when he's lower. So I don't know about this engagement per se for the red team, but it is a pretty interesting one from the start. We do see Champion Maids take down Snake Oil so low, but cannot do anything else. We don't see anything else happening. So we have Inverted Composer in between six members, six members again, from of the team of Blue. While we do have Crash Under Legend and also TF coming right back into it, but we don't have um, Snake Oil actually into it anymore because he has pretty, really, really low. So Inverted Composer is going to be turned upon right over here. It's taking a lot of bit of damage. Actually, doesn't actually take it down because Legend's actually going to be the one that's get first taken out first, and then Crash Lander is going to be focused upon. Really quickly, I'm, if I said it before, generally you want to, as a support, you want to protect your AD carry. That is not protecting your AD carry. That is just whistly, listly walking by and getting killed. So, unfortunately for that, Nader got killed, and then that just follows up with Ezreal getting killed as well. We do see Crypt's trying to come up over here and try to get some more damage onto it. But Inverted Composer is still in between all members and it's going to be taken down no problem really easily. But Champion Mage is going to be picked off from the side and Snake Oil is going to be chased upon. And yeah, that is pretty much that engagement. Recapping that, you definitely don't want to start off in the 4v5 situation. And especially that was a 4v5 situation. Sun Snake Oil could put in a little bit more DPS. Just because the Shen ult, um came in and helped save Snickle from pretty much damage and depth. But um, that is definitely the problem that we saw from that. We do have a 2v1 coming up right now, but I don't think they're going to be able to catch up Rayman per se. He's going to go use that slow onto uh, Snake Oil. Snake Oil is going to try to still catch up. Doesn't have any mana anymore, but can't really do too much from that. Oh, actually, he doesn't try to pick off. And Crypt should be able to come and pick off. Oh, wow. Rayman still just kiting around in the jungle, just doing this chase over here. Epic chase from Rayman right now. Using the ghouls to get that speed buff. Gonna try to go dive through. Oh, he's gonna get that ignite down and damage down from Snake on no problem. But yeah, generally that's what you see in a team fight in really, really slow fight information and level bit of slow information. Fast enough, up probably 200 times speed. And that's what you have to really determine in about 0.5 seconds, like what you're gonna do with this team fight. Again, Crestlander hasn't been making the greatest decisions. Legend hasn't been great, making the greatest decisions. We haven't seen Prab do too much to this Nidalee, and the Nidalee has been just taken apart. It just seems so no problem indeed. We do see engagement again. Prab is gonna try to get a hunt. Oh my gosh, that stop all the force just stopped everything, and Crips just to be able to take him down. No problem indeed. But the off is gonna be taken down from Crips. Crash Lander is going to be pulled upon, but it's not going to be damaged down, and it'll be back over here. And that pretty much is going to signal out the GG's for the purple or for the red team right now. Just because they can secure the Baron if they really wanted to, but they do have Caitlyn and George being really, really tenacious and can um, just get in there. So, don't know if this is actually going to be the end of the game, but I'm not going to actually finish up this again because I'm pretty sure this is just like a trade for trade and this is definitely you don't see this happen in well you know you do see this happen in tournament games but if it is happening in tournament games it's just because they kind of I don't know uh, they kind of didn't you know, talk communicate or something like that so yeah pretty much that's gonna end this part of the episode of um, No I in Team episode 13 again this is L3 IRD just saying something getting this done over here and saying, oh my gosh, it's been a long episode today, but it's been a pretty good one as well. So yeah, and thank you for watching again. Again, guys, do check out the great, great, great sponsors over on the left and right, Madcats, BenQ, Antec, um, Triton, and XMG. Thanks again, guys, for watching from Tiffany the Esports. Check them out, d-esports.com. It's a really, really awesome site where you can find out more information about the game of League of Legends CS.
Go slash CX 1.6. So I think they do a lot more coverage of that. Eve online and also the one the only star um League of Legends. I think I did say StarCraft 3, I didn't say League of Legends until the end. So yeah, check them out, check all that good stuff, and um, again guys, thank you for watching, from me to you, to you to me, it has been l 3 rd signing out. Thanks again guys, and we will be seeing you guys later.